I think so, yeah. Um, I'm just debating whether I should go get some things to eat or not. I was going to message you first saying, go and get some things and bring it down, but I didn't know if that was like, maybe you'd already eaten. I, well, I had dinner I mean, like earlier, at like maybe half past five. I've got a feeling I'm just gonna be popping things off as I go through this. Well, like, that's, what been, that's what I want. I've been naughty this lockdown, <laughs> especially <laughs> these last few days. And I don't. This is the thing: is I don't put on weight no matter what. And, and I know do that I. there'll be a day where it suddenly changes. But I keep looking down, just being like, it's "This is there. not that day." Yeah, <laughs> it's not that. I've had um, four. I oh, know there are five empty packets of giant Cadbury's buttons. The chocolate my, buttons. Yeah, on my. There's, there's not enough in the pack, is there? Is, not, it the, is it the one pound packs or the normally one pound fifty packs? Not uh, the not the big pack that not sometimes. Not the super giant ones. They're like they're yeah. normally a pound. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. get them if they're not a pound, but it's like 119 grams of chocolate. Yeah, like that's and they have the cheek of putting a share sticker on, like you know, to close it up again. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. nobody uses that share sticker. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but you know what's bad is that we get them, and like, oh, sometimes they'll be sat there for at least two, three days, and they're not being eaten. I just like at that point, I've just opened it one night, and they're gone. Yeah, they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> and then on the fourth day, Claudia would be like, "Where are, are the chocolate buns?" And I'd be like. <laughs> No, nah. <laughs> uh, I'll go get some. <laughs> yeah, I'm going out to get some now. <laughs> I've had to do that. That's fine, though. That's fine. Fully understandable. I shouldn't eat them all, but it's just it's too easy. It is. Um, and but, do you put them in the fridge as well? Um, I put them in the freezer. Oh, okay, yeah. I put all chocolate in the freezer if I can, but we only have one freezer drawer, so it's literally like it has to get demoted sometimes. But the back of my fridge is almost a freezer, so there's like a spot I can put chocolate in that I know is a yeah a good shout. Cold and I will, chocolate's the best, unless it's got other things inside the chocolate. I'll but, move on to chocolate in a minute. Okay. But the um, I have to now get some honey for the second half of my bagel. Um, so the reason I brought the honey down and started to have this is, as I said, I was quite proud of my honey purchasing. Um, so during lockdown, one thing I've noticed is that when I go shopping, I'm a bit more like, oh yeah, you can have that. Yeah. Cause life's awful. So here you go. It's fine. Have loads of chocolate. And like every time you go, just like at Get least more. five, 10 pounds goes towards snacks and oh, rubbish yeah, stuff. That's what I did. <laughs> and uh, this is what I was going to ask you is what has your thing been? Because I'm now, I'm now trying to become a honey connoisseur. This is Spanish forest honey. It's strong and malty. Jesus Christ. I don't know what strong and malty actually, I don't know how that measures because I've only had a few types of honey, but I'm learning that this one's quite nice on bread but on its own it's not as sweet um do you know what multi means what that what multi can you ex actually explain that to me malt no i don't know if i can malt. <laughs> i think that's a pretty because i kind of know what malt is yeah but it's pretty unexplainable I, d I think it definitely is. I have that definitely has a definition. I think it's one of those words that you you really f feel <laughs> what it's like, rather than it has to have a definition. Otherwise, it's just a taste. that's like a bin that everyone's just chucking stuff in it. Just... Yeah, malt <laughs> taste of taste. Oh, nice malty flavour. Yeah. Nobody knows what yeah. it is. <laughs> definitely malt there. <laughs> um, do you want to cue the music? Yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Welcome to the third episode of the Just Swimcast, the podcast entirely devoted to the development of our species through talk and discussion. My name is Tim. My name's Woody. And so the podcast story went on and the third chapter began. Um, we were just talking about honey shopping and lockdown spending on naughty things um and it's been making me a bit hungry uh so i'm really debating with um you should have come prepared well no all right you can go and you can have we can have a break for you to go and get stuff 
but when you to explain what you're going to get first, you can't be up there thinking whilst you're in the kitchen. Well, that's what, exactly what I was going to do. So, okay. I haven't got any apple juice this time, just a disclaimer. Got cold water. The thing is with apple juice, if you're talking a lot with apple juice, the um, it does something to you. Yeah, it does something to your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't have it. So I might just get... Um, <laughs> I might just get some water, like a glass of water. Um, I'll definitely get some some sort of chocolate. Uh, see, maybe... I've got two liters of water here. I'm ready. Uh, see, I'm, I'm ready go for the old tap water. I might get some crisps as well, but I don't know. Um, That's it... totally uninspiring. Just make it. Hurry up now and All come right. back. What time is it? Twenty one. Twenty twenty one. Leave it, leave it recording, we can time you. Got a brunch bar. Oh. Got a brunch bar. Jesus. One of these caramel, what are those? Caramel wafer biscuits? Yeah. See, these are all things I don't buy because... I know those, and they normally come in packets of, like, four or six. And that's just, you know, they'd be gone in a day. Uh, I've got apple juice as well. Okay. At least one of us is going to be yapping away on the apple juice. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I don't know if you was going to start with a story, but I've definitely got a story... My about, story was buying honey. That's as good as it gets for me today. Well, I've got I've got a shopping experience that I'd like to share. I think. Um, here we go. It'll be quite quick, I think. Um, so I was at Tesco oh, a couple of weeks ago. Can't remember. No, last week. Maybe a couple of days ago. I don't know. Sometime in the past. Um, past five days, and. I done all my shopping, went round, zoomed round, knew what I wanted to get, got all the things, got to the tills, and at the tills, you have to like get in a line and like wait two meters apart or whatever. Um, so I was waiting behind this guy who had like a medium sized trolley, like you know, it was quite full up because. I like people, I like to get behind somebody that has a full up trolley because I generally, I also have a full up trolley. So it means that after they've unpacked, there's enough time for me to get all of my stuff out of my trolley onto the conveyor belt. Now, I I, I always try to do that. But you the also... Last- you're yeah. not going to get queuing pressure from anyone behind. Exactly, exactly. Because why would you go to a double stack with two big hunking trolleys? So, yeah, exactly. I can see it. Um, I don't mind if there's someone behind me. Like, if somebody wants to, you know, get on the back, I don't mind that. Um, I don't, because I know that the person in front of me has got a lot of shopping. It's going to take as much time as it's going to take the uh, the checkout person to swipe each of their items. That's the, about the same amount of time that I can get all of my stuff on. So there's no pressure for me. I'll be waiting <laughs> with an empty trolley, waiting, waiting for them to pack and waiting for them to pay. So do I don't you, mind. If... Do you try and uh, load your items in an orderly fashion? Do you go for a sort of vegetables group together and then yeah. frozen stuff at the end so that no, when you're so, bagging it, you're splitting it afterwards? Um, I like to do... I have quite a strategic way of packing um, and unloading of my trolley onto the conveyor belt. So I generally start with heavy items. Um, so like heavy and strong items. So that can take weight, like cans. Yeah. Um, Apple juice, like those four, um, the pack of four apple juice. They're your bag base. Yeah, they're your bag base. And then you fill stuff on top that's all bag. 
Yeah. But then what I like to do is I like to throw a little um, curveball into the mix halfway through. About just before halfway of the whole trolley load, I like to put my vegetables because there are some things in the vegetables that don't have barcodes and they need to weigh them. So like sweet potatoes, if I've picked Give yourself out, a bit of time. Give yourself a bit of time. So that you can get ahead of the curve exactly. and then you put the pressure on them. Exactly. You sit there, hands on your hips, looking at the guy like, come, come on. Come on, what's going throw on? Throw it at me. What yeah, are you that's doing? It. Yeah, that's it. okay, all right. Now. Oh, I've got one. I've got one. One second. Go on. Something did happen. Um, What was it? What was it? It's a mango. It's a mango-shaped fruit. I don't know what it was that I was buying, but it had to be scanned. And the the dude he, uh, at the till he couldn't find he couldn't find like what fruit it was to click. Yeah, so he's like looking through them all for quite some time, just not able to scan it because they have to select it first. Yeah, mm-hmm. and um, in that time he was holding the fruit. Yeah, which I'm gonna wash anyway. Yeah, and he was like tapping his finger, like drumming away on it. Like, do, 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 do. oh no, <laughs> he's just drumming on it. And I sat there and I was like, all right, okay. I mean, it's going to be over in a second. And I can just put it in the bag and just, you know, I'll just sanitize it on the balcony for three days or something weird. Anyway, um, but it wasn't, it was a good, like, it was a good minute, like, tap, 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 like, humming to himself, nodding his head, flicking through the screen, tap, 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 tap. Um, so yeah. That's my mango. Uh, it wasn't a mango. What was it that I was bought? Was it an avocado? No, it wasn't an avocado. Uh, melon? No. Babe, what vegetables have I bought that are big? Savoy? Might be a Savoy cabbage. I feel like it was rounded like a sort of fruit. Did I buy a mango? Did you ask me to buy a mango? That was me, Bonsai. I don't know what it was. Anyway... So that happened. So back to you. Sorry. Um. Anyway, so I have this. So anyway, so I was behind this guy. Yeah. Uh, he had a fairly big trolley load and I had a big trolley load. And I was really excited to have enough time to unpack my thing before. Um. Before I had to, like, before it was my turn. Uh, previous weeks that I've been going shopping, I've sort of got to the end of my shopping and not found somebody that has a big trolley load and just like put myself on whatever I could find. Um, thus make, putting a lot of pressure on me to unpack all of my stuff whilst they're scanning things through and then like rushing around and like packing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pressure's on you. Nothing. You, you can't get ahead of the curve you there. Can't, yeah, I can't. Yeah, my plan's ruined. Actually... If you're a duo, you can fight back. If, yeah, if, if you're there with your partner, which is obviously not something we do in COVID anymore, but yeah. when you used to go shopping and have your partner next to you, both of you are scrounging away, fighting against him. Like, yeah, exactly. Um, so, so there you are, poor you. So anyway... Getting food thrown at you, so drowning. I was waiting behind this guy, and then all of a sudden this um, duty manager came over I saw this old person get into this into the back of the checkout of this empty checkout that hadn't like wasn't open yet. And I saw this young girl coming over, this duty manager. She looked at me and she said, um, would you like to go over there? On this like no one like an untouched one. So I thought, well, she hasn't I know she's asked me and I could say no. But that's not really how we are in England. We sort of that would you like to go over there question is like, can you go over there because <laughs> yeah. people are waiting? Yeah. Um, anyway, so I took all my stuff over there. Now I'm under pressure um, because I got to unload all of my stuff uh, and they're going to start thing. They're going to start um, going through the checkout, swiping me items. So I, I don't know if you guys do it, if you and Claudia do it, but I always do the normal thing of saying like hello to the the person. Hello, are you right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um or a COVID mask like Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got nothing back. <laughs> yeah, just Yeah. And yeah, that's fine. Yeah, well, and then so I unpacked all of my stuff 
and got it on the thing, walked past and looked at this, but I couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman. I looked at this person and they went, hello. And I went, what? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I got down the other end and then, and then they started, they waited for me to basically unpack my whole trolley uh, before they started scanning. So I thought that was quite nice. But then they started swiping and it, they just didn't even like push the items down. Just left them at the top. No, they just left them at the top, and it's just, just stacking like, oh. and you're like leaning forwards. Yeah, like, yeah. Look, well, and they've got those um, those like plastic acrylic panels that <laughs> stop you from getting too close to the yeah, checkout, yeah, yeah. and like you got to reach round those things and get yourself up there. Um, they Should wasn't they even wearing a mask, and every two seconds they kept looking around at their phone and tip tap tipping away on their phone, <laughs> and then touching my products that I was purchasing. And at one point, I was standing there. I was looking at the people queuing up behind, and I, I was looking at the checkout person. They were just on their phone, <laughs> and like, I was just waiting there for my products to be scanned. I was like, I've been fucking done here. <laughs> and not only that, it's because you've been sidetracked from your intended destination. Exactly, you were playing it as you wanted. It was your shopping experience, <laughs> and uh, I mean that's normally with a covid shop you get you get a better shopping experience than normal you've got the fear yeah. of covid always around you know it's it's everywhere you can't get away from it people then, people want to move away from you it's lovely it's great you've also got the fact that you've got the power of the mask which i've found is like especially so the worst thing about shopping in brentwood before used to be that every time i would go I have like, you know, it's a 50-50 chance that I'm diving into a school playground and going to see someone walking around that I used to know that I could talk to and it would be great and it's just, just it doesn't need to happen, does it? Unless it's like, you know, someone in my top 10, like you don't need to see me in Sainsbury's and I'm probably, if I do see you, I'm just going to be like skirting off into the distance, into the Argos section, just... <laughs> Um, I'm not going to be, yeah, I'll, I'll be scouting ways to avoid you, put it that way. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, COVID has made it easier now because you have this mask so you can just scoot around. And uh, even if I have seen people, it's like I could literally be anyone. Yeah. So, felt quite. Anyway, uh, they, those were my shopping words last, last time. Now, hopefully next time I go, I will be able to, continue on the path that i would like to go on and not be you know pulled off and and taken down this abysmal shopping experience route so something that's happened today is uh we're recording on the 19th of january 2021 and this is i believe i don't understand enough about american politics maybe it's the start of the end or the final day of trump being in office um, but I heard something that like I don't know how they're measuring this, but apparently hate speech is down by eighty percent now that Trump has been banned from social media platforms. Um, no way! Is that where did you get that from? Well, Fred said it in my meeting today, and he normally gets it from. He's very uh, diligent of what he's been looking at, but I could imagine it's on a strange metric to get something like eighty yeah. percent. But it did make me think that I, you know, a lot of this divide is caused by like this ongoing tyrant from the one side just going, wah, 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 and it's like it's going I think back it's and both forth. I think it's all sides. It's all sides it's a problem. Um yeah. so yeah, it's the last day of Trump's uh presidency and tomorrow is the inauguration day of biden um then it's the first hundred days of after so i guess the it's the first day of the first hundred days of his presidency they say that um a president is judged by their first hundred days in office so let's see what will happen. He seems to have like a good strong idea of what he wants to do with COVID. Um, hopefully he has good ideas for many other things as well. But I think it's, um, I have a bit of a conspiracy theory about this, about um, what's happened in the US in that I've, 
feel like or and fear that Trump was almost a distraction. Like um what I think has what I think has happened is people like the media companies, large institutions that control who goes into power and what happens in the world. They understood back in 2016 that there was a divide happening because of their own problem, really, um, because of the media. And they thought, and there was like a, an up, not a, an up there, there's like a, not a sorrow. I don't know the right word for it, but like a, a social upsetness with the president, like the the idea of the president being like somebody that's in this in the institution, like an institutional person, like a like a Clinton or a Bush or someone like that, someone that's they've got a long track record of being in government. Their parents have been in government. They're like they're fresh flesh and blood government by people. Um, and there was like a, a a consensus, a sentiment amongst the people that like were against, like they were just like fed up with it, fed up with those sorts of people just s- promising things and not keeping them. So Trump, for the people, was something like well, it was a break free out of that situation. It was like, all right, this guy. He's no, he's a businessman. That's what we're all about in the United States. Like, you know, we're a free country. We like everything big. Trump's like, you know, he's done everything. He knows how to do things. He talks like like he means what he's talking about. He doesn't seem like he's gonna bullshit us. Um, let's fucking vote him in. And it was a break. And the people, the institutions like um media big banks, people that own the world said, yeah, all right, let's have, let's give the people Trump for four years. It's a pit stop presidency. As a, yeah. As a pit stop. And then it moves on with the same race. And now, and now it moves on with the same race. Because now Biden seems like something that It's like there's a big relief, isn't like, there? Yeah. It's like, oh, we need some vanilla ice cream after this. Exactly. Freaking rainbow chocolate chip crazy bump ride we've been on already. Whereas no one would have said that before. No it's one like, would have said that with Hillary, would they? Yeah. And it would have been the sentiment would have been even worse now if Hillary had got in power back then. Yeah. And it's almost like so um think of someone like Andrew Yang, like new wave yeah. politician that you know, younger people like not someone who's like I hate to say it, but like really old. Like the fact that we're going back to that, like an old politician that's mm. like been there and seen there and done it is is a bit a bit played out, but um, heck, we're not Americans. We just have to wait and watch and see. It is funny how the whole world speculates over this whole presidency of uh, of They love it. But one thing I can say is that we survived Donald Trump. Um, I don't know. The hour's not up yet, but he didn't blow the world up just yet, and we are moving on to another (laughs) president. And that was always the thing. It's like, how bad can this get? And uh, I wasn't surprised. Like I thought towards the end of his presidency, presidency he would really try to like pump and dump the title of presidency so like trying to like yeah. shift stock prices or trying to uh you know i've seen him trying to pardon a few people but i, I thought he would pardon assange or something crazy to try and just get his name get more clicks so that he can exit this with more market to his name yeah because it's just a it's just a celebrity wild card right now everything he's doing yeah um but it was interesting to see did you see after he had COVID, he returned on a helicopter for like a media video and it was him going to the White House and standing on the balcony looking out. Um, if you haven't seen that, you should not, you should watch that because it's... I don't know. I think I have, no. I'll it's have crazy. That. It's like it's like the next Mission Impossible film, this guy landing from a helicopter and 
<laughs> he stands on the on the balcony. It's almost like survivor of COVID nineteen, <laughs> right? With like the American flag and like everything's <laughs> going, and it's just like, oh my god, <laughs> oh jeez. I would, uh, I think it'd be really, really interesting to be an English or, or maybe any person to go to America and see when like the national anthem comes on and see their. Like or go to a baseball game and watch them singing the national anthem first, and like, yeah, I, I, it's interesting though because those things they actually they bring like a community spirit, and when those kids and when the families all go to those games and everything, like, I bet it has a really good family vibe, and it's a lovely neighborhood to live oh, in yeah. because of it. Because of it, so I mock it, but it's actually it's interesting because it's something in England that we lack. We lack this like community spirit. Um, and I see it, I see it on Instagram, like everyone sort of like, apparently we do have it in some areas of England. Apparently people are still like out there banging their pots and stuff for the NHS. And um, I just feel like in England, we're, we're quite close natured to the point where things like that seem a little bit forced. Well, um, that's, that's one thing that sort of not, not shook me, but um was a new thing for me when I went to the Philippines for a few days. Um, the people there are like, well, even just this, in that they they have um, two words, which they, like, if you're a stranger to somebody and you want to ask them a question... Um, they would and let's so I'm a guy, let's say I'm talking to a guy that's behind a, a shop. Um I would call him Kuya. And what that means is older brother. Mm-hmm. And sister, yeah. if it was a girl, I'd be Ate. Yeah, it's the same in Indonesia. And so like straight away, in like embedded in their language is this idea of like family. Even mm. if you're a stranger. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you talk to these people and it's like, it's like they know you even yeah. though they don't. Yeah. Um, we don't have that here. We don't have this open friendliness. It's more like we're on the offensive from the start. Like, what do yeah. you want? Like, yeah. why are you talking to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's kind of sad actually. This is it. Yeah. What are we gonna do, hey? Move, move, uh, move country. I think. Yeah, it's <laughs> funny, you know. I I speak to people about moving to Indonesia, and some people just say like, "It's like, why would you want to leave England for a country like Indonesia? Or why would you want to stay in, in England?" I I I can't think of a reason, and and I am gonna settle down in England. I don't think I have the balls or. I don't think I'm quite there yet to just lift up life and move to Indonesia and risk it all. But God, I said to Claudia, as soon as I started learning about like her culture and Asian culture and stuff through her, that I feel like I was, I was born Asian, but I look like I'm not like everything in their like culture just. It's right, isn't it? It feels right. Yeah. It sits so much, so much better than how we do things. Yeah. I don't know why it is. Maybe it's hotter countries. They're so hot they just can't be asked to be arseholes. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, but that's that's a good point. I uh, they do things the right way, like food. Food family. is a celebration. Yeah. Like at any point in the day, like food is always a celebration of and of just the food. Not not because yeah. there's something going on. Not because there's like a wedding or something. It's a celebration for the food. Yeah. That's it. Even at a wedding, like once you sit down and you eat, the wedding people just forget like that there's a wedding. Like now, it's the food's chance to have a a round of applause. Um, and we lack that. Like you know, they um, when I watch like uh, Liza eating with her family, they don't just make like a plate of dinner for everyone. I oh, know, it's like a feast, isn't it? It's a feast. Every day is a feast. Yeah. Like just whatever you want, whack it on the table, a couple of hot plates and just dish out what you want. Yeah. There's always rice in the, 
rice cooker. Oh yeah. It's like it's a living the dream. And I'm sitting at home with my jacket the, potato and cheese and beans. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, I nice bit of cheese and beans on my jacket potato. Oh, yeah, and looking it over is there. interesting to try and explain like English food to anyone in the world. Like it's you awful, actually, isn't it? <laughs> what is it that we eat? Like we eat the standard meals. Uh, I'd have to get a book and actually learn outside of like what. Let's try and name some. So I'd say sausage and mash. Yeah. Jacket potato, like you said, fish and chips. Roast Supp- dinner. Supposedly uh, the tikka curry. I don't know if that's true, though. I'm not sure. Well, that, yeah. I can't even be asked to argue that because I bet our tikka curries aren't as nice as uh, other tikka curries in the world. Yeah. Um, so we, it's basically we meat, have nothing meat, meat and, and vegetables yeah. yeah meat and potatoes and veg if you're lucky yeah um and i guess that's the crux of it of all food really but it's just the way that we do it is just so unappetizing and yeah. dull and flavor it's like we just haven't had any ingredients in our history yeah we we <laughs> that's true we don't um we don't have any, yeah, we don't have any flavorings, really. We don't have really, like, native flavorings. Something that's, that's the problem. A, that's also interesting is I think our standard for food is lower. And this is something that's amazed me is um, I'll share with you a Facebook group, which I'm a part of, but it's Rate My Takeaway in the UK. And <laughs> it's a mixture of people posting awful pictures when their takeaway is bad and laughing at how bad it is. But also a hell of a lot of people posting their takeaway thinking it's good. <laughs> and everyone being oh, like that's brilliant. And everyone being like and it's funny because some of them some of them get financially mugged off. So they'll be like seventeen pounds for two burgers um and and one chips. And you'll look at it and it's like it this like tiny mini, mini burger that just looks horrendous, it's all fallen apart. Oh. Yeah. Um and and they just do silly things like that, um, but plates that look like literal just a mess on the plate. Uh, and the comments are quite hilarious as well. But one thing it's made me realise is that, dude, people don't have a high standard for a takeaway because if this stuff was sent to me, I I probably wouldn't eat a lot of the stuff I see on there. I don't really look at my takeaway when I get it, but like the places I go to at the moment that are like the ones that I'd recommend and only ever use like they're all decent they're not like that yeah which what do you tell me some places that you use so for indian i go to pink garlic if i wanted to choose like the best one i'd probably go to pilgrim's karai um but at the moment there's a there's a set menu that they do at um pink garlic which is the one near e-move in pizza go go in brentwood they do a set menu where you get it's ridiculous this set menu okay listen to this it's a chicken curry which is actually a uh i think it's a chicken tikka masala but i always ask to have it changed to a jalfrezi and they're like fine so a chicken jalfrezi um bombay potato sagaloo rice uh just plain white rice Spike. No, peel out rice. Oh, okay. Um, sauces all the lot, poppadoms, um, and I feel like something else that I'm forgetting. But a few sides and stuff Non-bread. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's all for I think it's like fourteen quid or something ridiculous. Do you get a drink with it as well, like a coke well, bowl? I do because the shops across the road. So I I don't go to that one for a drink because their drinks aren't that cold. So I go to the shop across the road and get okay. a cold can. Um, but, fourteen so I, quid. How how long often? How long does it last you? Like a couple of days? Uh, like two so days. The set menu for one will last us that night, and then the sides will be left over. But we'll finish the curry because there's only like eight pieces of chicken in there anyway. So you only okay. get four each, and then you fill it with all the vegetables. Or you can go up for the upgrade, which is what I got with you once, which is literally forty quid's worth of curry for twenty two quid. And oh, yeah. can, that lasted us like three days. Nice. It was ridiculous the amount of stuff they gave us with that. Um, so there, you know, if you're in Brentwood and you want a 
set menu to get you through lockdown. Pink garlic, hit them up. I think on collection there's a ten percent discount. Um, so nice. Get stuck in. Uh, other places I use would be, I think for Chinese we just go to the Swan. Oh no, we go to the one at the end of the High Street near me. Um, Peking Chef, yeah. Oh yeah. They're nice in there. The Asian family is always funny. Always, uh, she remembers my name. She remembers everyone's name. Like such of a course. talent. Yeah. <sighs> we haven't really been get. We haven't really done a takeaway here at, at home. I don't know. Yeah, you're always so sticking at it, like just. It's not me. It's just that. He never, I yeah, don't, he never, I don't he never caves in, does he? I, I guess if you just he probably enjoys it, doesn't he? So. Uh, I think he just doesn't like. I think he doesn't like the idea that I've gone and. Like paid for. Food when food. you've got it. Yeah, he doesn't see that. Yeah. yeah. What have you? What did you have tonight? Uh, dad made a like a tomatoey pasta. With bacon and yeah, 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 I know chorizo. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Um, it's quite nice with some apple juice. Went yeah. down a treat. I had uh, spaghetti bolognese. Oh, nice. Similar dishes then. With some posh Waitrose uh, flatbread, like tomato flatbread thing. Very nice. Are you still nice. getting the um, garlic bread? You still a fan of the garlic bread? From where? <laughs> Wherever. Just garlic bread in general. Just garlic bread, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You definitely still raving about the garlic bread. You don't like garlic bread? No, I do. It's just uh, garlic bread with I spaghetti bolognese is next level. Yeah, you got to cook it just right though. You like if you forget about it, that's it. GG. Yeah. I think sometimes slightly underdone can be can be nice when the butter's still there. Oh. Um, but yeah, you don't want to be getting it to the point where it's uh, just like you know how it gets rock hard. <laughs> yeah, like breaking it crumbles in your hand. Yeah, it's nice if it's just basically just because it's already cooked, right? When you buy it, it's already been cooked. All you're doing is warming up. I'm pretty sure, like you're not actually cooking the bread. You're just warming it up. <laughs> Am I right? I don't know. Like, is that right? I think so. Yeah. It sounds like it. It's like part cooked, but it's not crispy yet. It's not been... It's not golden cooked. So you put it in the oven for like, what is it, 10, 15 minutes, and it just cooks it golden. But just before it goes golden, there's like a stage in the middle where it's sort of kind of crunchy but it's soft like really soft in the middle that's the best point of take that's the best time to take it out like that um anyway that's enough on food i want to go into your uh what did you bring what what, what topics have you got for us to talk about um well there was one topic that we put aside I think in the first episode, um, which I had up my sleeve, which was, I haven't managed to form it into a full question yet, but maybe I can, is what, let, not what policies, but what ideas do you have that would, that you would think would make this world a better place to live in? Right, so, um, I think last time you mentioned like um, four day week or something, a four no, day four, week, yeah, or four hour week, four hour days or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and 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 before you start, um, like a, uh, what impact will any of these policies have? And sure. like, what what good do you think they will do? So it's it's an interesting question because I think a lot over the last few years I used to think about these sort of things and always think it was obvious. And now I feel like I'm at a point where I can appreciate that when I say the things that I'm about to say, there's normally someone I can talk to who's like, yeah, well, you can't do that because of this. 
and they normally end up being right or convincing me at the end of the day. So I think my ideas to improve society are ones that I, I don't think it's easy to necessarily make these things work. Anyway, disclaimers aside, I think that people should work less. Um, I think that we should educate better about things that matter. You know, one of the things I was thinking of asking you was how many things at school did you learn that really benefited you? I think the experience of school is is beneficial. Um, well, it's hard to answer that question, really, isn't it? Because you don't know what you've picked up in school that you've got, like, subconsciously learnt. Like yeah, maths, I, like basic maths. Like, yeah. of course we learn that at school. So I think... And I use that quite a lot. The thing is about learning something is you push to a certain point, like things that we've learned from school, reading, writing, or, you know, discussing the conversation like we're having right now. I guess most of that is picked up from school, yeah. But to say that me studying Dorian Gray or Of Mice and Men in English was by any means like a pivotal point in my education or purposeful in its design is a bit... Like everyone does it, everyone goes through that class and we all learn this book and we learn things about the backstory and how to, and it does polish you in certain ways and it's an education, I get it. But my point is, is that I think that once you get past the basic skill levels of, yeah, you can read, you can write, you can do the essentials, maybe when you're like 13, 14, um, I think your education should shift towards, okay, what are the things you enjoy enjoy? And we're going to teach you how to apply yourself and and the talent and skills to stick at your education in those areas. So like English would have been really useful for me if I had dedicated 90% of my curriculum to English and just followed that. Uh, and, and you could change at any time. I don't think it's like, because you might say, oh, well, you're only going to learn one thing. Maybe you can take two or three subjects and you can be you can be straight and narrow or you can diversify a bit. But they should be things that you choose. Um, and I know that does happen eventually when you're doing GCSEs and A-levels. Uh, but I still think that more often than not, it is just standard sort of ideas. Well, so it's funny you say that about um, like of mice and, of mice and men because... It seems like that maybe you didn't learn the things that, or you didn't, you, know, you didn't point out the things that I would have pointed out if you had asked me that. Um, the th- see, the things that I took away from those lessons are not that oh, everyone should learn this book and whatever, but they were the those were the first lessons. This was like what year nine, ten, something like that. Was that fourteen, fifteen years old? Mm. Um. They're the first sort of times that you get introduced to complex, like fairly, like not complex, but what you would deem as complex story writing. Yeah. Where you've got like circular narratives, foreshadowing. Like these are words yeah. that I'd never I heard mean, before. It's, this is true, but, but this is how narrow minded I am. Like I'm someone who have read, I would have read books on that level by the time I was looking at them in lesson. And I would, I kind of just assume everyone has like, but I appreciate there are some people where like they might pick the last book they picked up before that was Harry Potter and like, and they haven't really gone into like deep reading and actually thinking about storylines. So that's, I know, I don't, that's what, this is my point though. I don't think those lessons are about the story. It's about the creative writing. It's not about, oh, Of Master Men is a great book. It's about, here are the techniques that were used to write this book. Mm. And maybe some of you would like to know those because maybe one day you'll write your own book and you like you need to know some techniques about writing and how to make people feel whilst you're writing. And, you know, they're yeah. the things that aren't, they're just not, they're taught in school. Right, well, how they're about not this? communicated in school. How about this? So I think it's fair to say that, um, and I can look back to some teachers like Mr. Lilliet in English where you'd really be pushed to like actually contribute like and think about what you were saying and like try and tug something together that made sense. But I think that it also depends on a teacher's attitude to what are they doing 
are they simply following a curriculum and just like I have to read through these next thirty pages and give them these questions, or are, uh, they, are sure. they are they dancing through that experience and delivering a a spectacle where you're captivated along the way and you want to go on that learning adventure? For sure, this is the kind of thing that I think is perhaps better explains it is just like there's there's not enough soul and creativity to explore within different realms um i see i think that isn't necessarily a i i think all i don't know how you'd achieve that i mean you know how would you achieve what i just said deep realms of creativity in all subjects like i bet the curriculum and the teachers would look at me and be like fuck off like how do i do that and fair well, enough here's the thing is i think the ambitions of a young graduate that's just come out of university and wants to be a teacher would like has those brilliant ideas like about but they get forced they here's the here's the thing teachers are overworked underpaid like if you think about it i i don't know how much doctors are paid but it's a lot of money like maybe it's what 70k up like if you're a doctor 70k upwards don't you think that teachers maybe there should be like another level of education in order to get there but teachers baseline teachers should be earning that in sec like sec for secondary school like it's such an important role that we undervalue in our society yeah um, and so maybe they, don't do, you... they don't do that in Asia. If you walk around in Asia, I think you have like a teacher's uniform and you're like respected as a teacher. Yeah. Um, so, and so what my point was is I think there are, I think the young people that want to become teachers do have those ideas of I want to be a teacher that inspires people. Yeah. Which I'll come back to in a bit, something that me and my dad used to talk about quite a lot. Um, but they get thrown into this world. They get given a class that they run mm. and they get paid 33K a year. They're dealing with like, you know, every two weeks there's a thousand kids going through them yeah. for their class. That's like too much, too much. Like, like all you want to do is at, at that point, you're over, so overworked that you just want to make sure you're hitting minimum targets you know yeah yeah pick a few yeah i can, I can change these people exactly yeah um, that's it that's it yeah I, I think that's very true so and i there are i think there are some things to change um in our world that would help support teachers in being the inspirators that they want to be so that's the first thing that i would like to instill into into this conversation is Teachers should be. Is they should they name the title should change from teacher to inspirator. Somebody who inspires children to do something. Because that is something that. Um, and I think I mentioned it last time we spoke about uh what I, what I was doing at school. But I found it quite early, of my own accord, and I was quite lucky to find that. Um, sort of logically d driven but with a creative aspect of music um, and I was lucky enough to find out that I enjoyed those things at a young age for me to essentially decide my future at 15 14 years old when I chose my GCSEs Woody, yeah. Woody I'm really sorry to interrupt I've just lent over I've picked up the uh the 200 gram bar of milk chocolate from the fridge that I've got from Sainsbury's, Sainsbury's own make. Yeah. I've opened it. I've cracked two rows off and then I've split them in my hands in front of me. It's fruit and nut, isn't it? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, what have you done? <laughs> Um, I'm I'm lucky I looked down and I just saw like that looks a bit weird I thought it could be like a scratch in the chocolate you know when you get that white crustacean which is like where the did you drop it immediately yeah I just put it down on the desk in front of me 
Yeah. I don't even know if Claudia will like that. I did, don't know. Did you eat any? Did you put no, any? No, I didn't. Didn't have any. Okay. <laughs> but also, I didn't. I like. I'm going to dive in the fridge again. Like you'll forgive me. Like uh, this is horrendous. I'll uh, go in a bit. Do you have more on chocolate? Uh, let me have a look. I think I've got some. Uh, I've got like you know those green polar bars that are mint. I think oh. I've got the chocolate version of those. It's like a penguin, polar. just a, just a penguin, but less sangry. Oh, okay. Um. Anyway, where was I? Ding, ding, ding. I got two, didn't I? Oh. I'll let you crack these open and gobble them first. If I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the audience wants to listen to it. What else are they doing? Yeah, true. Um, so there's a topic quickly. Yeah. Unless you, we're, we're, we're we'll we going anywhere? I think we'll we, you know we'll be a bit sporadic this podcast. I mean nobody's listening to it anyway. So well, this is something I wanted to touch on because people actually are okay. Um, people, the hours are going up. Subscriber levels are through the roof. We've hit double digits. We've got. 10 subscribers um views on the last video over 50 views on the first video over 100 um people you are blowing this podcast through the roof um we are now on available of, on yeah we're on all the places now spotify what? google podcast itunes yeah. podcast are waiting progress we're just um uh, well i haven't Nego done it yet but <laughs> negotiating contracts as well <laughs> yeah sorting out some figures um and yeah, it's, it's it's been going really well. Uh, we have had some odd feedback here and there. I've spoken to a few people about it, so it's nice to have the feedback. Um, someone did say, well, people just, they're not going to have three hours to listen to the podcast. And uh, to A what, lot of people said that to me as well. Do you know what I say back to them? Is Well, uh, well that's fine because they won't be listening. So uh, that doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> what do you mean? What? Well, I, I I don't need to worry about the fact that most people won't have three hours to listen because, well, yeah, I'm not going to encounter those people in my life. Like everyone else who does have three hours or who has 10 minutes or however long they can possibly want to tune in for. Um, it's I, about our time, not theirs, I think. I think yeah. We, I think, um, I think, I mean, a lot of people have said it to me that um, three hours... It's quite a long time. And I've said to them, well, you don't have to listen to it all in one go. Yeah. People don't understand that, that, you know, you can pause and come back later. And usually a lot of players, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Spotify, they remember where you are on that episode. Yep. Um, so you can just come back to it later. I do it all the time because yeah. I, I fall asleep to stuff like this. Like, Yeah, me too. But I don't sit there thinking, oh, that's too oh, long. God, I feel rude on this podcast, guy. I shouldn't be falling asleep on him. I need to listen to this to the end. Like, fucking just do what you want, guys. Yeah. Um, Live the dream. But remember to like and comment. We haven't had any comments yet. Even though we asked so nicely at the end of last episode. I think maybe because nobody gets to the end of the episode. So they don't. Someone will take the comment virginity. Yeah. We should we should grab people by the balls at the start of the episode. We should be like demanding all of these things. Yeah. I thought it was the other way around. I thought we had to put on a good show and then say afterwards, well, you know, after all that effort, if you could please be as kind as to like subscribe and uh, no, comment on the just video. Go in for it. You just got to go from the start and just if you get anything, any any sort of step back from anyone on the other side is just uh, you know, thank you very much. Makes the dreams come true. E even if it's a dislike, like at least it's an engagement. It's feedback. We'll take it. You know, yeah. It's just proof that someone's out there, really. Exactly. Rather than just numbers on the screen, which could just be some bot just yeah. loading up the player and playing it. Um, I thought you was going to make a point about uh, about this. About what? I don't know. You just, you, you interrupted what I was saying to say something about this. Oh, about our viewership. Mm. 
Or was that it? Well, it was more the time thing I wanted to say. I can't remember how I got there. You said something. Oh, okay. Um, I do have a question, though. All right. Are we in a simulation? Um, <laughs> all I can hear whilst I'm thinking is... <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be the eating episode like people are just gonna i think it's more of like a this is a a, a vision into our lives and this is where i'm at right now and the sound effects <laughs> if it's winding you up just leave then once again this podcast ain't right for you because <laughs> yeah. that's where i'm at you know i think if you're not munching out like that's what i, yeah, I get your almost, snacks people i literally Come on. wanted to say to you bring food to the podcast because i wanted us to be sitting there just <laughs> <laughs> just going at it just living the dream but that's where i'm at um and that was only bar one i've got second bar coming around the corner first like in five minutes or so um are we in a simulation um i It's plausible. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I can answer any more than that. It's plausible. I think so. You think I we could are? believe it? Well, one of my questions for you was going to be if you were stuck in Minecraft for five years. How, what would you do to pass your time? But I guess my segue from that, from this, is that how far beyond something like Minecraft do you have to go to achieve the coding level to code the universe? Which is a long way, but you can travel a long way with some very simple algorithms. And, you know, if someone had like an algorithm for like just the idea of from the first molecule to expand to this, and they could just set that algorithm in motion. Maybe that's so, a uh, so there's um, a thing. The reason why I uh, yeah, I agree that um, and there's I can't remember what the theorem is, but there's I can't remember what it's called. Obviously, it's named after somebody, but I can't remember the name. Um, it's the idea in information theory that. Um, I think entropy plays a part of it as well. That you, there are two ways of of cal not calculating something, but two ways of doing something with information. You can either have a really fast. Uh, Let's just put it in the idea of computers. So you can either have a really fast computer that can just crack through the, like just blaze through the computation in no time. Like say a quantum computer could with uh, cryptography. Let's give that as the metaphor or the idea. Um. Or, so that's one way, you just have like a, the technology to do it instantly, to c compute something instantly, or as fast as you can. The other way is to use storage, like information storage, lots of information storage, um, and time. So, again, going back to cracking a cryptographic key, would be using a traditional computer that we have these days, but it's taking a really long time to crack to crack the key. Yeah. So, um, you were talking about algorithms and going a long way with simple algorithms. We think that the world is, you know, we think that speed of light is fast, but if we are in a simulation 
we don't know what time frame we don't know how fast their version of speed of light is you know whatever we are simulated on the world that that the the verse that that machine or wherever it ever is sits in mm. will have different physical properties and different time well that one might be in another machine that's got another one exactly at which point the question of it is useless anyway time is only relevant to the barometer where you are no like, but the point is is that my point i'm trying to get at is is people might think you would need an insanely fast computer or whatever to simulate something like our universe i say not necessarily because we don't know what time frame that computer is running on it could be right, like it could be really slow in in their realm because they're running it on what I would quote as a traditional computer. It's just taking so long to, to compute every uh, quantum interaction. So the a Planck's length, right? Shortest time step would be equivalent to like the clock rate of their computer. And that's like a fairly slow clock rate for them. You don't know. So when mm. your computer, when you buy a computer and it says three gigahertz, theirs is their their version of gigahertz is our Planck length. So when we want to simulate something, you know, we would just design a Planck's length in the world that we're simulating to be a billion of our Planck lengths, which to us is really slow. You would need to run this computer for millions of years for it to simulate like one second in that world. But in that simulation that we've built, it's one second. They have no, they have no way of telling whether it's one second or not. To them, it's just one second has passed. But in the world that we're simulating it on, i.e. this world, we've got all of the time to simulate that one second. You've got a million years to assimilate that one second. Traditional compute computers could do that with ease if you've got that long. All the lighting calculations, you could do it because you've got so long to calculate it before you push it. So it, it is. that's why I say it, it's plausible. That's my answer. It's quite long and you kind of need to know a bit about computers, but yeah. So do you know about Omamua. No. <clears throat> so, Omamua, the interstellar object that passed through our, um, I think it was not our environment, I guess the Milky Way. So there was a, uh, basically this object that went through the Milky Way in 2017. And it was the first object that went through that didn't show a vapor trail similar to a comet and didn't have the right atomic makeup to be a meteor, okay? So they were looking at it, trying to figure out what it is, and it shines in a certain way that makes it look like it's flat or a disk, okay? Not a disc like a UFO yet, but like that's what they're saying about this, uh, the shape of it, this object here. Um, and also, it so comets show a speed increase when they go through the atmosphere because the hydrogen that burns on them gives it an extra like push. It's called like a, an extra push or something like that. Yeah. Or oh, very scientific. I think it actually, while I was listening to it, uh, I was learning about this the other day. On a very low level, I was like slowly listening while I was falling asleep. It is called like an extra push. There's some word like that, a shunt, I don't know. But um, it didn't do this, but it was carrying the same speed, which meant it had more speed than anything that had orbited from either around the sun or orbited within our Milky Way galaxy, which made the scientists have to say that the only option for it, because it isn't these things, is that it's either something we don't understand 
and most likely has come from a different galaxy because of the speed that it was going at. Mm. And it went so fast that we couldn't go after it and investigate. Interesting. So take that one with you and run with it. <laughs> <laughs> They're fucking coming, mate. Like, oh God. <laughs> That's it with UFOs, isn't it? As I've been going down this rabbit hole of like watching videos, listening to different people talking about it. And it's like what I said to you about movies last time. So our devout listeners, if there's any symmetry and you can remember what we've talked about in previous episodes, I once spoke of the fact that movies are boring because you know how they're going to end and you know how the storyline or the story arc normally goes in films and who's going to die and who isn't. Okay. And it's on the same level with UFOs. It's like every video you watch, you're like, oh, that's really interesting. Oh, 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 they could be real there. Oh, oh, but but no one's proved it. So, like, and there's never ever any proof that is anything other than speculation or just, you know, we never quite get there. So it's yeah. a bit it's a bit of a I can kind I can understand when uh, I say to you, have you heard of this object that did this? You're like, Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. I will put it in the uh Aliens of Real box and I'll whip it out on a sunny day and I'll have a beer when they are. Yeah. When they're exactly. flying through the sky. I'll be like, Yeah, I, I thought they were. <laughs> exactly. I spent means... hours on YouTube going down the rabbit hole. I I was a believer. Don't kill me. <laughs> exactly it means nothing yeah um <clears throat> it going back to your like humans are a disease thing though so the same guy who i was learning about it who's a professor av loeb who's a theoretical physicist um he was talking about the fact that people say that okay so He's convinced there's a hundred percent planets with life out there because of the mathematical equation and rarity of oxygen molecules and just planets that have the similar setup to how Earth has them, all close enough or variations. Mm -hmm. Life is a possibility elsewhere. Um and then beyond that, he said that we have this understanding that if life is out there that they should want to speak to us or that they should somehow be communicating with us or something like that. And he said that the furthest he will go with the statement on that, on the Muir thing is that he believes that it could be a shard of environmental damage from a different civilization. Like it could be the first thing that has come from an event caused, whether it's an explosion or something like it could come from somewhere but he said that we should let go of the idea of like anyone wanting to communicate with us on purpose because we're so f lowly evolved on the spectrum of what life could potentially end up being. Like we think yeah, that we're, we're the young. end story. Yeah, yeah we think we're such an end story. And this is why like I, so the theory of life, yeah, we talk about saying that we'll further our species and stuff. I feel like my worldview of what has happened in the world is that we keep getting in this loop of either meteors hitting Earth and not quite achieving an intelligence greater or a civilization greater than what we have now. There might have been ones that were better than what we have now. Obviously, how do you measure a great civilization? But my point is, is that we could we could be hit by a meteor in the next 10 years. And all of this, this podcast, gone. internet, yeah. everything, gone. And we look back and we're like, oh, everything on this earth has only happened in the last, like, what, 3,000 years, like, humans have suddenly... Like, there's literally people who believe that, that humans weren't around, <laughs> like, 3,000 years ago or 2,000 years ago. Yeah. And and there's people who think that 10,000 is like, okay, that's a bit more realistic. Dude. Yeah. It's it's freaking hundreds, like it's hundreds of thousands of years that I think hominids have been going around, and that's why we see fossils of them and stuff like that, and cave paintings that are you know years and years and years and years and years and years old. Okay, yeah, yeah. and 
I think a lot of the cave art that I see when I look down this rabbit hole is always about um, conspiracy city here, but it's always like they're trying to talk about the importance of life and animals. And then they also they have this massive focus on, on the sky, on stars, on planets and astronomy, like all the ancient ruins and all the astronomy stuff, like all cultures, they always have this asphyxiation with the sky. And it's because it's like, at different times you can understand that different civilizations understood time or they understood seasons or they understood months or yeah. star signs that appeared throughout the calendar sky and yeah. therefore knowing that the planet is round when someone discovered in our recent civilization that planet was round not that long ago yeah, but we can yeah. find instruments from ages ago that knew that it was round that were built in a certain pattern to make sure that on like the equinox there's um, an alignment or something like that. Yeah. So it's obvious we're stuck in these cycles of like just melting through our own civilization. And if you think about an alien species on an alien planet, the level that they must be at is like... Um, well, there's it, two ways, right? You know. There's, there's, Yeah, there's two ways. Um, well, there's three... There's potentially three reasons why or maybe four either and it's this is the ignorant route which is we are the most intelligent species in our visible universe um which i i don't know if i doubt i don't know whatever the next one is um as you say we're too naive slash too dangerous of a species that you know if we saw something if if like what what would the world do if we got contacted by an alien we'd fucking fly a nuclear missile at it in that direction yeah like no but, species would want that but this is what the dude was saying is he was like we're like ants we're like insects and there must be loads of planets that are yeah. around so there's an intelligent civilization and they're looking around and they're like okay right there's a planet over there planet over there okay um these planets they keep disappearing they keep blowing each other up like they keep doing this weird stuff okay right let's not bother with them let's just leave them they're not affecting us they can just blow themselves up and if one of them actually makes it through and becomes like us and show some signs of not being special people who just blow each other up. Then we'll give it a go. <laughs> we'll, we'll go for it, yeah. Yeah. But like, apart from that, we're all good. And now, uh, the other, the other thing, um, <laughs> is that it's just not feasible to travel those distances. <laughs> Do you know what? Wait, I've got to show you this. I've got to show you this quickly. This would be um, you save that point, okay? Save that point. Yeah. So I'm gonna to have to screen share with you on. I don't Discord. know how you screen share. Oh, I'm doing it on Discord. So okay, I'm... I don't have Discord open. Oh dear. Um, wait, I can send it to you in this if you want. Um, oh, I'll send it to you on Teamspeak. Okay. So I was looking at some news for the Trump ending, yeah, and I saw this Twitter feed which is a tweet of all of the things that Trump did that are funny that we should remember him for during his time, okay? And there's a, there's one of him at, like, the World Senate where everyone's getting, like, organised for a picture and there's, like, 40 politicians, yeah? And he just, like, sees the camera ahead and you just see him from the back of the crowd just slowly just sort of puff his chest out and just, like, push people out of the way Mom. and, like... And then he just stands at, I've got to link you it, honestly. And then he stands at the front of the um, of the picture, like where everyone's gathered. And it's, uh, it's quite hilarious. Where is it? Here we go. Do you know what I worry about? What? I worry that Discord is just going to ruin everything for this. That's fine. I'm not, sure. I'm not, I'm not screen sharing. I'm just sending you the tweet. Okay. So if you look at that, you see that GIF that I just, oh, I sent it to myself. Here you go. Paste. Shoving aside another world leader to to walk in front. So this is what would happen, yeah? So this is us 
humans. Donald Trump is humans, and we're joining the alien confederation for the first year. This is what we'd do when we turn up. We'd be like, yeah, we're here. I, I'm from planet Earth, like, looking all big, like, I can't just even... be, oh, yeah. being just being Donald Trump. Yeah. That's what I was imagining. That's why I interrupted you. <laughs> what an arsehole. Yeah. I can't believe he did that. Everyone like, looks around him, like, all the other politicians just like, oh, Fuck fucking no. Americans. Like, what an that's arsehole. It, mate. He's... He's done it though. He's he's got the brand. He's played American just to a T. Yeah. Um World Stage. I can't remember what he was talking about now. Um I think it just the it, yeah, the other reason it could just be it could be unfeasible to to travel that fast. Um or maybe we're just not technologically advanced to be able to pick up signals. Maybe they're using some radio frequency that we don't know about or whatever some communication method but ultimately like this is the point that i'm trying to make uh the universe is so big and unless there is a way of beating the speed of light like the center of our galaxy is still light years in distance away. Mm. And light years is defined as the number of uh, the distance that light travels in one earth year. I reckon there's a way to travel fast though. Well, there could be, but wherever you could, the idea is is that could you even if you can beat the speed of light are you able to send information through that interface that that's the key thing because if you can do that then yeah maybe we could be contacted by aliens right now but we just as i say don't have the technology to so know what receiver to have to pick it up but other than that it would take <coughs> years like so much time for and like you can't travel like you can't say oh let's just take a trip to the center of the milky way like with the technology that we have you have to travel at the speed of light basically or at least half the speed of light and even then it's like hundreds of years away so you need from an alien civilization to be able to reach us you need a few things you need their lifespan to be way longer than ours. Like yeah. 10 well, times, 100 times, 1,000 times longer than ours so that they can sustain travel throughout space. Crazy technology to be able to get them fast enough to be able to travel those distances in the time that they live. Um, and number three, I don't think there's one needed. I think that's, too, I think that's already a lot to ask of an alien civilization. But if they've been around for a billion years, then they well could they could well have. But then, as a if, lot of time to polish off those spaceships, they do. And in which case, <laughs> then if they are that old, then we are definitely too young to to even bother with. We are literally ants to them. Yeah. So there is no point. And that's it. And exactly. now we've gone and got a virus. Now we've gone and got a virus, <laughs> and we're probably going to die anyway. <laughs> Oh dear. So I'm wondering if a return to normal life will become like a political movement. Like Brexit in the sense that once this does die down, I think that there'll still be a lot of I think it will it will come the walls like and the curtains will come down slowly. There won't be someone just saying, Right, everything's open, everything's normal again and everyone acts normal. I don't think that'll happen. I think it's going to be like a really gradual shift. And I think there's going to be people complaining that it's being drawn out for either political gain, financial gain, keeping pubs closed, whatever. I agree. I think it's quite a dangerous, it's a, it's a dangerous path that governments are walking into right now. I think um, at some point people will decide that they've had enough. 
So and a lot of people already have, you know, a lot of people already don't wear masks. A lot of people already post on Facebook that this is all bullshit. More people die from car crashes or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think it's, so, it's a tricky this road. This is what I kind of question. So when I see someone in Sainsbury's without a mask, I have this question. I'm so in my head, I'm like, okay, so you're one of three things. You're exempt, in which case after this, I'd like to be explained what some, maybe I should Google it because I don't understand. What I'm sure there the is exemptions? Because I might be exempt. I just haven't looked. Yeah. Like. It takes a certain person to want to be exempt, in my opinion. I agree. Um, I'm, I'm exempt. Anyway, point two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry if you're exempt. Um, point number two, right, is... Uh, it's just jealousy, really. Yeah, I want to be exempt too. Point number two is that you don't believe in it, and I can kind of get that, but I the point where you just say fuck it and people look at you because i can't be the only person looking at you like what the fuck are you doing bitch yeah. why you're not wearing a mask yeah well i'm not the only person everyone's doing it so you're just strolling through i had a i had a maskless wanderer that t- uh today when I went <laughs> to Saint maskless Chris. Wanderer. I, I did <laughs> she, she was strolling absolutely strolling and then there was like there was a Another thing was that there was a guy in front of me walking quite slowly as soon as I was leaving the shopping aisle just having paid, exiting the shop. And normally I just mow round someone in front of me and just get out of the shop. Yeah. Just like she did to me in a minute. Um, but I was walking slowly because I was giving him sort of, you know, give him a few meters. I'm not in a hurry. Yeah. I'll go past the flowers section. Brilliant. You know, see some flowers. That's that's a lockdown highlight. Um and she overtook me, no care for space, had her mask off, not even a mask on her pocket, just mask off, no mask. Off she went. Yeah. Or she's person number three, which is literally just like, fuck it, I'm just going to go for it. I don't know. These maskless wanderers, though. Yeah. Um, I think at one point people will just like think they've had enough now i'm going to google how you're exempt whilst you do this okay there is something like what i always thought is is uh, about the pubs in particular if they all just like banded together and like you know reached out to the the local um people that you know go to that pub open up a Facebook channel. All pubs do this. Open up a Facebook channel, say, right, you know, we're in Essex. This is all of our, this is the entire, this is the Essex pub society. And we've decided, fuck it, we're going to open up. So we need your help, people, to keep us open, to come down, have a drink. And if the police come, be our shield. Yeah, it'd be an interesting one, wouldn't it? Where? What would happen? Yeah. There's so many... You know what? I don't know how the government keeps a lid on things. I really don't. Neither I don't do know I. How, I don't know how... You know what it is? It's, it's got to be the chlorine in the water, mate. There's got to be something magical. <laughs> like, I'm not saying it's the chlorine, yeah, but there's got to be something magical going on. Because the fear. fact... It's fear. The fact that people don't... Yeah, it must be the newspapers. And it, it's, 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 it's fear. All, it's yeah. all very manufactured very well to pull the wool over your eyes and make yeah. you think, like, you just want to get to the next day and have your next morning coffee and get through the day and then exactly. fall asleep and hope you don't die and all these things that can get you. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a well-spun web, but um, I've got the, uh, the exemption rules if you'd want to hear them so oh, i do um I'm young, children, asthma. young children under the age of 11 obviously okay. yep. um not being able to put on slash wear or remove a face covering because of a physical or mental or impairment or disability so that's basically like so that's if, basically if, you've if got, you don't want to wear one you don't have to wear one <laughs> Yeah, if you've got any form of something that you consider to be not a 10 out of 10, <laughs> then yeah. you don't have to wear a mask. The second could, one... Could you just say, like, oh, I'm anxious about wearing one? Well, like, here's mental... the next one, mate. Try and measure this. Right. If putting on, wearing, or removing a face covering will cause you severe distress. <laughs> well, dude, 
obviously. Well, for some people it will. So like, um... mate, my glasses. <laughs> do you know what? I, if a policeman says to me this, I'll be like, mate, my fucking glasses seem up. Yeah, I can't see. I can't see anything. <laughs> I am blind. I can't tell you the amount of times I have to stop in the shop, take my glasses off, and then sit there and rub them with my T-shirt. Rubbing all the Rona on it. Put them back on, and then proceed forward five centimetres, and they're fucking foggy again. <laughs> I've I've learned a way now to wear the mask in a specific way that it doesn't do it, but it's probably a way that makes the mask half as useless. But yeah. um, I'm still nose and mouth covered. I'm not a oh these people with their noses out. We'll get to those at another time. Uh, I was I saw a fellow walking past my house. Um, he was using the face mask as a chin warmer. Keeping but that's, his chin warm. No, well, he's walking past the house. So when I. So when I go to the no, high street, I for do, example... I do see a lot of people using, in shops, like, you know, they just like to warm their chin whilst they're in oh, the shop. Oh, yeah, if you're in a shop, yeah, yeah. I know, yeah, exactly. That's even the, it's even the nose poking out the top and, like, they'll be with their friend, like, say, oh, Tracy, pass us the sausages and, oh, <laughs> just fuck me, just kill me. Anyway, on to the next. If you were travelling with or providing assistance to someone who relies on lip reading to communicate... All okay, right. that's fair enough. Yeah, okay. Um, severe times might want to learn, learn hand signaling, um, but yeah, I do understand that. Yeah. To avoid harm or injury or the risk of harm or injury to yourself or others. Well, that's a bit loose, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, pfft, might put a mask on, slip over and die. Um, <laughs> to avoid the risk of harm, if you... Wait, to... To avoid injury or to escape risk of harm, and you do not have a face covering with you. Oh, what? so if you're running into the shop because someone's chasing you with a knife. Okay. God, they thought of every. <laughs> Some of them are so vague, and they're like, "Oh, by the way, um, if someone runs in and chases me with a knife, do I still need a mask?" No, you're fine. Okay, <laughs> we 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 should put that in there. Yeah, we um, should write that down. <laughs> To eat or drink, but only if you need to. What? What? I fucking why do you? <laughs> I must eat like starving kids in Africa, and I'm in Sainsbury's. I must have this bag of crisps <laughs> right now. Yeah. There's no waiting till I get outside. <laughs> um, to take medication. Oh god, that's another thing. I I don't go down the pharmacy aisle because I realise. If anyone's going for headache tablets, exactly, if anyone's yeah. got a cold, <laughs> dude, they got, it. <laughs> they got it. It's like <laughs> the toothpaste is halfway up the up the, the aisle from like cold and, and stuff like that. And I'm just like, God, go in through the other side and just get in and out. That's Jesus. so true. I don't know people lingering in the medication aisle. If a police officer or official requ or other official requests you remove a face, well, this is interesting. That would be if... great, wouldn't it? Could, yeah. So, could you please remove your face mask? Yeah, okay. And just <sighs> how funny is that? Yeah, that you actually have to do that if they say so. Um, so they can take away your protection at the wish if they want to. Um, yeah, is that what it actually says, or did you just say that? Like you just it says that? if a police officer or other official requests you to remove your face recovering. Uh, define other official. Yeah. I might become an official. <laughs> yeah, and just go around asking people to take their face mask off. Do you know what so would you be good take for take your a, face mask off? Do you know what would be good for a YouTube video? Would what? be to go to Sainsbury's, to In put a high is. vis on, yeah. and to uh, wear like a gas mask, <laughs> and to... Uh, have a GoPro on and just like the traffic person, just go up to people and be like, um, excuse me. Please um, come with me. You've got a below the nostril hanging uh, mask quite there. Um, two inches up, please. Otherwise, that would be 20 pounds. <laughs> and just to go around just and, and like vocally, like not whispering to people, like just so everyone can hear like, oh, um, are you exempt? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. Um, what was the reason? Oh, OK. OK. All right. Uh, guys, we, we've got a faker, and then they're just dragged out. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. It's, I think you would need a lot of um, bravery to be able to do that. Yeah, well, it's like my, uh, even, I was thinking about the shopping etiquette video. I was thinking we could go to uh, 
you know, there's those Tesco's that are 24 seven. If you do want to go shopping at two 30 in the morning, it's, it's great. Empty. I've done it before at uni. We used to go there and play hide and seek and stuff like that. It was quite good fun, <laughs> but, um, don't have much to do at uni. Uh, That's true. And then, uh, we could go, I was thinking at like two o'clock and do trolley etiquette and like keep five meters distance up the aisle. But they don't so... have trolleys in those twenty four seven ones. They don't? It's just baskets. No, 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 no. There's the big ones, there's big, big you know the big huge Tesco's. Some of them are twenty four seven. Yeah, the one down um Down Romford. Yeah, that's twenty four seven except Sunday. And has it got trolleys? It does have trolleys, yeah. So I think you're turning porcupines, mate. Um, so, yeah, we could go there. I think they'll just kick us out. I think. Like... Well, no, but what I was imagining is, is you just put a GoPro on your chest, you zip up your jacket, and then you just film it, and you're at one end of the thing, and I'm at one end of the other, and we can sort of like roughly communicate, like looking at the crisps, like, okay, I'm ready to film now, ready sorted crisps. Um, <laughs> and then you could, uh, we could Hand do what we needed to do. Would suffice as well. Yeah, exactly. We could probably get away with it, but then I just thought, oh, God. Or would you prefer the lip reading? I don't know. Yeah, to be fair, I'd... yeah, I should do, should do that, shouldn't I? Um, That's the, That would be the best way. So if anyone ever said to you, why aren't you wearing a mask? You just... Pretend you're mute. You, just, pretend you're deaf. Just, yeah, just don't deaf answer. Deaf mute. Yeah. I don't know where they're going to take or, that. Or learn some basic sign language. Yeah, and say I learned the phrase I don't know enough sign language. <laughs> then you could like pretend you're exempt. Ding, ding. Unless they punched you in the gut and you went ah, oh! then they would be like, well, you can talk. Um, I think we've uh, we kind of lost track of what we were talking about. I think it's fine. I think uh, I think that's where we're at. Well, we'll it's the third one, man. We can't expect to always be uh, dropping bombs on the world. This is the silent episode. One day, episode 100, we'll go back and we'll think, do you remember episode three? What a blissful time. Wasn't our best, but we made it. Yeah, well, we, we did have things to talk about. We just kept going off track. Just keep going off track. Yeah. Do you know what was different this time is I had my computer screens on. I didn't click anything, but things are just moving. Don't know. <laughs> Whereas before I was just sort of closing my eyes, sat there thinking. I'm looking at a a terminal on one side of the screen and TeamSpeak on the other side of the screen. Terminal, for those people who don't know what that is, it's basically a window into the matrix. Oh, I'm looking at the terminal. Oh, I'm reading the numbers. Oh. No, nothing's happening. It's just telling me that everything's okay. Everything's okay, guys. The matrix still together. Yeah. Oh. And with that said, um, thank you very much for bearing with us for the episode three of the Just Swim cast. Um, 10 subscribers strong we are seeking our 11th subscriber uh, we're hoping for I mean we got 50 views on the last one if this one can break 30 we'll be absolutely just blown away um, and yeah anything from you to add over there Woody um, no I think we'll try and pick up on some of the subjects that we stopped talking about this episode maybe next episode 